So, dear brothers, uh, last week we studied about uh, soul part one, where we studied that uh, the soul dies and uh, what is actually the soul. Uh, that the Bible says that the man is a soul, that the man doesn't have a soul. So, what is the soul and what is soul composed of? Uh, uh, we see that uh, we saw in last week uh, that uh, soul is uh, made up of uh, two things. Uh, one is the body and uh, other is the breath of life. So that uh, breath of life uh, is actually, uh, actually translated from that word uh, spirit uh, in the Bible. So if you see uh, the two things that are required for a man to live, uh, for a soul to exist, for a soul to, for a soul to live is a body plus a breath of life. So last week we saw that the Hebrew and the Greek name for the uh, soul and the breath of life. And now what is the meaning of the soul? It is actually a sentient being, a being which is having feelings. And uh, uh, the breath of life uh, is uh, actually the invisible power which comes from God. So, if you see, if it is oxygen, it is not oxygen because oxygen only has, uh, this is the chemical compound in it, but it doesn't have the right to live which only comes from God. And uh, uh, today we will continue this one to the second part. This uh, breath of life uh, is a, any difference between uh, uh, which God has given to man animals if you see? No. So the, it is the same breath of life uh, that is given to man and it is the same breath of life that is given to animals also. So there is no differentiation in this breath of life at all. So let us read what the Bible says. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3rd chapter 19 to 21 brother. Ecclesiastes 3rd chapter 19 to 21. Uh, Peter, brother, uh, welcome. Uh, uh, I will. Okay, Ashish, brother, please. For so that which befalleth the sons of men, befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one bread. So that a man hath no preeminence over a beast. Hmm. Nineteen to twenty-one, Ashish brother. For all his place, all turn to the game. Who knoweth the spirit of a man that goeth up? Okay. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? And the spirit of the beast, they are doing downward to the Okay, thank you, Buddha. So, if you see, this verse clearly says, the vices of all men, Solomon says that, uh, you see, uh, the one uh, befalleth the man, the same befalleth the beast. And there is one thing. Uh, so, so, as one dieth, so dieth the other, and uh, there is no differentiation at all. So everybody has got only one breath. So the breath, the breath of life is the same that God has given to man. It is the same that is given to human beings also. So then if you see, what is the difference between a man and animal? If you see, it is on the body organism. You see, man uh, compared to all the animals uh, is very, not so huge and gigantic. Huh? But if you see, there are various big, big uh, and uh, gigantic, uh, you see, animals. But compared to their body, their brain capacity is very, very, very small. But if you see in man, the one-eighth of his body weight is his brain. So the differentiation between man and animal is actually is based upon the body organism and the brain, uh, you see, capacity. Therefore, if you see, uh, though the animals are very big uh, and very gigantic compared to a uh, man, their brains are very minute and very limited. Therefore, you see, man can do so many things. He can speak, he can uh, type, uh, he can travel, he can compute, he can go to a bank and withdraw money, he can eat food, cook food, uh, you see, he can drive the vehicles, he can operate the computer. We can teach others. So all these things uh, man can do. But what about animals? Uh? How many animals have uh, got uh, limitations? Uh? Like for example, we can uh, you say tell animals to dress, to be neat, to be clean. But uh, uh, can we tell them to stitch their own clothes? 
and uh, you see and uh, select the own clothes and wash it uh, and wear it themselves no they can't do it uh, that is a limitation see we can tell a monkey to operate the computer just open it and close it on it that's all but we can't tell a monkey to create a software you see that's impossible and uh, we can tell animals to you see uh, make them ride some bicycles as they do in the circus but uh, can we tell them to ride uh, a car for us when there is no driver that is highly impossible they can uh, eat food uh, but can they cook food definitely not uh, so there is a difference between man and animals uh, based on their uh, you see your uh, organism body organism but the breath of life uh, is uh, same for everybody and this breath of life you see which god had given to adam was given only upon one condition and what was that condition you see god clearly told of everything in the garden of eden you can freely eat of all the trees in the eden but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat for in the day you eat the fruit thereof what will happen you shall surely die so it was upon a condition that he had to remain obedient to god you see until you see until god tells him so he was not supposed to eat that fruit but once when adam ate the fruit what happened you see what did god say you shall go back to the dust ha you shall die so god had given him the body and for that god had given him the breath of life once adam sinned you see god took away the breath of life the right to live on this earth once when the right to live on this earth was taken back from adam what happened adam slowly died he came back to the condition you see in which uh, he was uh, created uh, before god gave him the breath uh, how was he so it came to the same condition uh. you see let us read uh, uh, genesis 3:19 genesis 3:19 brother in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it for thou taken for thou art and unto dust shall do return very good brother see it says uh, uh, till do return to the ground for out of it do was taken for dust do what and to dust do shall return so man was created from the dust we saw last week how man was created from the chemical compounds so once when god uh, you see takes back this breath of life what happens automatically the body the body naturally goes back to what uh, to the dust therefore when man dies what do the people do huh? they bury it you see or they burn it and you see that also they throw the ashes inside the ground you see that is the reason you see man returns to the you see ground the dust and the spirit you see that means the breath of life huh? the right to live who gave it actually god and this one returns back to god so let us read uh, ecclesiastes 127 brother ecclesiastes 127 Then shall the dust return to the earth, it is what, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Very good, brother. Then shall the dust uh, return uh, to the earth uh, as it was, uh, and uh, the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So, who gave the, actually, the spirit, the right to live on this earth, it was God. So, what will happen? God will take back that uh, spirit, the right to live. So, when we say... that the spirit uh, goes back to god the right to live goes back to god the breath of life goes back to god it doesn't mean that anything you see a material thing went back uh, to god it is like this uh, imagine we usually stay in some rented place uh, okay we take some house for lease or rent uh, isn't it we make agreement uh. so once the agreement is done what happens uh, naturally the right to live in the house goes from the owner to the tenant so when we say the right to live goes from the owner to the tenant uh, does it mean the house uh, went away house literally walked away from the owner's place and literally went to the tenant's place no the house did not go anywhere house will remain there only but the right to live in that house is actually you see a invisible power that power the right to live in the house was actually of the owners 
But when he lent it out to somebody, what happened? Ah? You see, it comes to the uh, tenant. Uh, but imagine, you see, once the tenant uh, period is over, you see, though the tenant is staying there, uh, even in the house only, even after the lease period is over, what actually happens? Uh, see, naturally, that power, the right to live in the house goes back to the owner. When we say that uh, it goes, goes back to the owner, does it mean that, uh, you see, any material traveled? No, everything is the same. The house will remain the same, the house will be there only, the owner will be there, the tenant will be there. But the right to live in that house goes back to the original owner. This is the same way, dear brethren. When God gave that uh, spirit, uh, the breath of life to Adam, you see, and God, when he took it, uh, what happens? Uh, naturally, you see, the right to live went back to God. Doesn't mean that something any, you see, uh, uh, something uh, which is uh, immaterial uh, went back to God. It is the power, the invisible power, uh, you see, that God gave to Adam. And that invisible power, you see, the right to live, you see, God took it away. See, let us see the beauty, beautiful example. You remember, no? When Jesus died on the cross. What did Jesus say? At last he said, no. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Isn't it? So, yeah. then what did Jesus do? Jesus died on the cross. Isn't it? So let us read. It is beautifully given. Luke 23, 46, brother. Luke 23, 46, brother. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having saved us, he gave the ghost. Ah, you see, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. You see, what did he surrender to God? The spirit, the breath of life. Because Jesus was sinless. Okay, so he could not die at all. So if he has to die, he has to die voluntarily. He has to sacrifice his life. He has to lay down it uh, to God. That's what Jesus did. Uh, Jesus, when he was on earth, he clearly said that uh, I, uh, nobody has the right on my life. I lay it down voluntarily to do God's will. <coughs> So let us read John 10 chapter, brother. 17 and 18, brother. John 10, 17 and 18, brother. Therefore doeth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. See, I have got power. I have got power to lay it down. I have got power to take it up. You see? So that power was invisible. This is not a thing that we can see. You see, some people, they say, you know, the police officer will tell, oh, you don't know how much power I have. Uh, the prime minister will tell, you don't know how much power I have. What is that power? Can we see? <laughs> is it strength? Is it might? No. That is the power, the invisible thing. Uh, you see, dear brother, this is what Jesus, uh, you see, uh, laid down to God. He had that uh, power which God had given to him to live on this earth. You see, he could have lived forever and ever, but he sacrificed it uh, to do Lord's will. Uh, therefore, you see, Jesus gave up uh, that uh, right to live on this earth. And that was an invisible thing. You also remember, you see, Stephen, well, Stephen who died now, uh, Stephen was, uh, you see, uh, beaten and uh, he was stoned to death. Uh, what did Stephen do? Let us read Acts 7.59, brother. Acts of the Apostles, 7th chapter, 59th verse, brother. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Uh -huh. You see, he calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Did you say, Lord Jesus, receive my soul? No, <laughs> he did not mention soul because he did not have any soul. He himself is a soul. So what did he say? Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Receive my breath of life. Receive the right which you gave to me to live on this earth. Take it back. So he surrendered his life. Isn't it? Therefore, uh, in Solomon, you see, in Ecclesiastes, it is, nobody has this right to retain this breath on the day of death. Isn't it? See, whenever a doctor, uh, you see, gives pumps in oxygen, can a man live? No. Why? Because that is just only oxygen, but not the breath of life. Read Ecclesiastes 8, chapter 8, verse brother. Ecclesiastes 8, 8, brother. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. 
neither has the power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. You see, there is no man that has power over the spirit. To retain the spirit, you see, to retain the breath of life huh? in a day of death, you see, he has no power. Nobody can restrain the brethren. You see, even the doctors, they can give treatment, you see, they can pump in oxygen, but they can pump in the breath of life. Why? Because that right to live, that invisible power to live on this earth, that has to come only from God himself. Now, this one is beautifully demonstrated to us, uh, very wonderfully demonstrated to us in uh, Ezekiel 37 chapter. So kindly open Ezekiel 37 chapter. See, in Ezekiel 37 chapter, <clears throat> uh, Ezekiel was shown a vision. You see? Ezekiel uh, was uh, taken to the valley of dry bones. You see? Where uh, he saw so many bones which are lying, which was dead and it was dry. God asked him, Ezekiel, do you think these bones will live? Ezekiel tells, uh, Lord, you only know it. Then he tells, okay, prophesy to the winds. Uh, prophesy to the winds. Uh, so, as uh, God had commanded, Ezekiel prophesied uh, to the four winds uh, that uh, it may blow on this, uh, you see, the dead bones. Uh, so, as Ezekiel prophesied, you know what happened? You see, the wind came from four directions. Uh, you see, and uh, it blew upon that, uh, you see, dead bones. Uh. So once it blew, you know what happened? The bones began to join one together. All the bones began to join one together. You see, one one after the other, one after the other. You see, all the bones uh, systematically joined. Uh. But uh, it had uh, no flesh, no nerves. And then again God told, okay, prophesy again. Then what happened? Slowly the nerves came. You see, slowly the muscles came. You see, and uh, eh? God told again, you prophesy. Then slowly what happened? The skin, uh, you see, came upon uh, uh, those, uh, you see, uh, bodies. Uh. So it had a beautiful human form. But was there life in it? There was no life in it. Then Ezekiel tells you again, prophesy to the breath, let it come and blow upon it. Then when the breath came inside, it began uh, to live like a strong army. It stood like a very great army. So let us read a few verses, brother. Ezekiel 37 chapter, brother. Ezekiel 37 uh, chapter, uh, verse 1 and 2 and 3, brother. Huh. Okay. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? Mm. And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Mm. He said, Can these bones live? But her Lord, you only know it. Then see what happens. Verse 7, brother. Huh? So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. Mm, see, Ezekiel was told to prophesy. As soon as he prophesied, what happened? Bones began to join to bones. Now, verse 8, brother. Huh? And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Ah, you see, as you prophesy, what happens? The sinews, the flesh, the skin covered, but what was not there? The breath was not there at all. You see, he doesn't say the soul was not there. What was not there? See, body is there. Same way Adam was created. You see, huh? what was there? Body is there. You see, but clearly how body was formed is clearly given there. But what was not there? Breath. It doesn't say the soul was not there. Breath, the breath was not there at all. So, next what happened? Huh? God commanded the breath. You see, verse 10, brother. Huh? So, I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them hmm. and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. See, when he prophesied, what came inside? Breath came, it seems. Then they lived. 
They stood a great army. See, the beautiful picture in Ezekiel gives us a beautiful relationship about the body and spirit is equal to soul. Isn't it? See, body was there. The breath of life came. So what happened? The man became a living soul. Same as it was mentioned in Genesis 2nd chapter 7th verse. Therefore, you see, huh? the Bible says uh, the body with the spirit uh, is dead. Read brother. James 2, 6 brother. Huh? James 2, 26 or 6 verse? Uh, one minute. 2, 26 Sorry. Okay. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. See, as the body without the spirit is dead, it doesn't say the body without the soul is dead. You see, it says body without the spirit is dead. So likewise, you see, the faith without works is dead. Okay. Now, we have studied uh, the clearly uh, the systematic explanation of uh, how uh, man was created and what is the meaning of soul and how soul is composed and how this combination of body and spirit, uh, you see, brings to the Existence of soul. Now, okay. Now, let us see. <clears throat> when man dies, what actually dies? Is it the body that dies? Or is it the breath of life that dies? We need to understand this one very clearly. You see, when uh, man dies, uh, what happens? Uh, what God had given to him? Body and breath of life. Man became a living soul. Isn't it? Huh? Like for example, see, I'll give you this uh, clear explanation. We already saw it uh, last week. Uh, you see, the body is a TV. Okay? Now, uh, if a TV uh, itself is not there, then what is not there actually? You see, that program is not there. Program doesn't come. If there is no TV, program won't come. Similarly, if uh, only current is there, will the program come? No. Current is there. Okay. But uh, TV is not there. Will the program come? No. So, for the TV to function, for the program to come, these both things are uh, necessary. So, if either thing is cut off, uh, the program is the one that, uh, you see, ties. The program is the one that doesn't come at all. Therefore, we read in the Bible, in Ezekiel 18.4, that the soul that sinneth, it shall Die. It is a soul that dies, no, not the, you see, uh, what do you say, the breath of uh, life. So, there was no hope for man until uh, Jesus uh, died on the cross. Everybody was totally gone forever and there was no hope for a man to get saved. You see, there was no hope from this death uh, to be released from this death at all. When? Till when? Till Jesus died on the cross. So, till Jesus died on the cross, there was no chance at all. There was no hope at all for mankind. But uh, once when uh, Jesus died as a ransom for Adam, what happened? Uh, there was a hope that man will live again. Therefore, we read in uh, 1 Corinthians 15-22, no? it says, uh, as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. I read with the Rashish brother. First Corinthians 15 22 with her. Okay. So for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. First Corinthians 15 22. So by the death of Jesus, a resurrection is guaranteed for each and every mankind on this earth. So everybody will be resurrected back. And come back to life on this earth. Therefore, this death, what man is actually dying, is actually compared to sleep in the Bible. You see, why is sleep in the Bible? Because if somebody goes to sleep, yeah, it is a surety. It will sure it happen that he will come back to, uh, you see, he will wake up in the morning. That's for sure. Okay. If somebody goes to sleep, yeah, it is a guarantee that I will wake up in the morning. Isn't it? If somebody goes to sleep in your house, how will you make them sleep? Uh, will you weep, cry? Oh, you're going for sleep. Oh, you're gone forever. Oh, you're going. Will we say that one? No. What will we say? Sleep fast, sleep fast. You need to wake up early in the morning. Sleep. Don't make any sound. 
स्लीप कम ली दैट्स व्हाट वी स्पीक नो नहीं है बिकॉज वी हैव कॉन्फिडेंस दैट इफ ही एंटर स्लीप surely he will come up in a morning uh -huh. it is the same way with the death the last thought uh, the last thought when he slept was the first thought will be uh, when he wakes up in the morning therefore this death is also compared to you see coma if somebody goes to coma will they know anything they don't know anything uh, you see they will be in a coma only the last thought will be there in the mind nothing will happen you see what all is going around they have no idea at all you see huh? until they come back from coma huh? that will be the first thought therefore this death in the bible is compared to sleep each and every death condition is compared to sleep in the bible therefore huh? uh, whenever somebody dies you now in the christians especially they put on the grave you know uh, rip rip means what rest in peace rest in peace means not all huh? you are dead so please rest so that is actually the resting place the 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 death condition you see that itself is the grave that itself is a resting place where every dead are sleeping nicely when how till jesus second coming they are sleeping nicely read isaiah 57 chapter 1 and 2 brother isaiah 57 1 and 2 brother the righteous perisheth and no man lay it to the heart and merciful men are taken away none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come they shall enter into peace they shall rest in their beds each one working in his uprightness very good brother see the righteous perish and no one lay it into his heart you see they are all sleeping you see in the best they are all resting in their beds they are all entered into their peace rest in peace this is what the bible says they have picked up this uh, rip from this verse only they are all sleeping nicely dear brethren uh, therefore you see there are so many verses in the bible like for example we just now saw stephen died uh, you know what uh, what happened to stephen after his death where did he go did he go to heaven let us read acts 760 Acts of the Apostles, seven chapter, verse sixty, brother. Uh -huh. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, "Lord, lay not this sin to their charge." And when he had said this, he fell asleep. You see, when he had said this, he doesn't say that uh, he went to heaven. He says he fell asleep. Fell asleep is what? Uh, he will again come back to life when at the Lord's second coming. Uh, read one more verse, brother. Acts thirteen thirty six, brother. Uh -huh. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was led unto his father and saw corruption. Hmm. You see, what did happen to David? Huh? When David uh, had served the Lord, uh, huh? you, after doing the will of God, he fell asleep. You see, the Bible clearly says that David fell asleep. But David did not go to heaven. No, no, David did not go to heaven at all. See. Acts two thirty four was there. Read. Acts two thirty four was there. Acts of the apostles two thirty four. Okay, brother. But David is not ascended into the heavens. Okay, brother. Thank you, thank you. See what is it? David is not ascended to heaven. So where did he go? He is sleeping nicely. Where? In the grave. <laughs> You see, so David did not go anywhere. Neither did Stephen, nor did any person in this earth. Everybody is sleeping. Read, brother. Second Peter three four, brother. Ah. In saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. See, the fathers fell asleep. All the fathers in the Old Testament, all our forefathers, all your forefathers. Let it be any religion, any caste, any belief. What are they doing? Ah, they all fell asleep. They are all sleeping nicely, dear brethren. You see, remember now, Lazarus. This is very beautifully given in the Bible. Lazarus was actually dead. 
immediately they send the messages to jesus saying please come lazarus is not feeling well then when they come to jesus they tell lord please come very fast your friend lazarus is not feeling well so what did jesus say and jesus said that uh, no problem let him sleep he is taking rest huh? uh, then the disciples uh, said uh, oh good uh, huh? if he is sleeping is very nice no he will come out from the sickness very fast then uh, jesus uh, clearly said you you because the disciples did not understand that jesus was actually speaking about death since what did jesus say jesus clearly said the lazarus is dead lazarus is dead he is dead he clearly told but yet in this incident we come to know that jesus compared the death of lazarus he is sleeping in the grave to a beautiful sleep read brother john 11 chapter 11 to 13 brother ha huh. okay these things said he and after he had said unto them our friend lazarus sleepeth but i go that i may awake him out of sleep see then he said ah lazarus is sleeping i go that i may awake him from the sleep now everybody thought that he was speaking about literal sleep ha huh. continue brother then said his disciples lord if he sleep he shall do well hmm verse 13 hmm. how with jesus speak of his death but they thought that he spoken of taking of rest in sleep huh? you see now what did disciples say a lord if he sleep he is doing good but jesus was actually speaking about death he was not speaking about literal sleep when everybody Uh, goes to sleep in the night he was speaking about death that death was compared to a sleep why because you see when lazarus was sleeping huh? he was in a dead condition jesus went and woke him up and brought him back to life dear brethren so that's a beautiful you see example that you see lazarus was sleeping all the dead are sleeping more about just think imagine you see lazarus huh? lazarus is a friend of uh, jesus or is an enemy of jesus can anybody answer bishop brother lazarus is a friend of uh, jesus or enemy brother friend, friend of, of jesus friend uh, then uh, definitely friend of jesus means he should be a good man so if he yeah. is dead uh, he should have gone yeah. to heaven only no huh? yeah. if, uh, uh, if martha and maria they were crying jesus could have told martha maria why are you crying he is my friend he is in heaven see see heaven see the sky he is singing hallelujah he is with the holy angels he is happy in heaven why do you want to call him again back this earth why do you want to give him trouble he has to again come and suffer sickness pain sorrow better to live in heaven than this earth he could have told no did jesus tell no why because that is not what the bible says but in fact jesus went to his grave and wept uh, seeing the helpless condition that clearly proves that lazarus was not in heaven or hell uh, okay then neither he was brought back from there dear brother he was in a dead condition so jesus wept ha uh, huh? why did jesus weep ha huh? you forgetting that he was in heaven ha huh? uh, suddenly he began to uh, make some fun and joke and uh, uh, he had poor tears uh, dear brother he knew that man was dead means he will be sleeping everybody will come back that's what jesus said no you don't know martha i am the resurrection and the life okay if any man dies he will come back to life do you have that faith she told yes lord i have that faith i know that everybody will come back to life in the last day she had so much of faith you see na that is the what the bible says that dead will come back to life dear brethren that's what jesus did so lazarus was sleeping in death a uh, death condition he was brought back to life actually the only one person to be resurrected from the dead see lazarus was raised from the dead not resurrected from the dead the only one person and the first and the last person to be resurrected from the dead is our lord jesus christ read colossians 118 brother colossians 118 and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that no things he might have the 
preeminence. See, the first born from the dead, uh, the first to be resurrected, actually resurrected, to be originally coming out from the dead is Jesus. Then what about the previous person? Huh? So many previous persons were. Huh? What happened to them? Did they go to heaven or hell? Nobody has come from the dead. That's what the Bible says. You see, Bible cannot uh, make any simple, uh, you see, uh, quotations like this or simple statements. Neither can Jesus play some jokes with uh, his uh, disciples. This is not a, a thing to make fun of. This is very serious matter. The Bible says that Jesus was the first to be raised from the dead means he is the first. So before this one, none have risen from the dead. Neither can anybody go to hell or heaven. So Jesus was the first person. What about the world? When will other people come back to life? They will all come back to life only at the second coming of Jesus. Read 1 Thessalonians 4.16, brother. 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God and the death in Christ shall rise first. See, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Jesus' second coming. Aha. Uh -huh. With the trump of God he will return. Then, underline, and then only the dead in Christ shall rise first. First means first. So there is no people who will be raised before this one except Jesus. You see, the dead in Christ, the Christians are the one who will be raised to life first dear brother now has the second coming happened has jesus uh, come already huh? where are the dead reason no dear brother and uh, so all will come back to our life when jesus returns uh, jesus said no huh? read john 5 28 brother john 5 28 what does jesus say hmm. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Hmm. Marvel not at this. Don't be surprised. All that are in the grave. Jesus, Jesus said that uh, some people are in heaven, some people are in hell. No. He clearly told all that are in the grave uh -huh, shall hear his voice and come forth as Lazarus came forth. Now, as the Lord come and uh, given the shout, come out, everybody. No. When he comes, it will happen. And the Christians are the first to be resurrected. Nobody will come to life before this one. You see? And moreover, everybody thinks that as soon as the man dies, his soul will automatically go to heaven. Huh? And stand before God for judgment. Who knows the path for heaven? Can we know the path of heaven? Huh? Uh, for the satellite to go to NASA, from NASA to moon, <laughs> is so difficult. How can we directly, without any guidance, all souls, all religion souls will go to heaven or to stand before Christ for judgment? It seems. Huh? What does the Bible say? Huh? Do we know the way for heaven? What does Jesus say? Read John 14, 3. Hmm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you unto myself. Ah, that where wait, I am. Wait, wait, brother. What did you say? Read again. If I go, I am prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto my. Receive place. you or uh, why come again? Anyway, we are all going. Ah, uh, here to hell or heaven. Why did you just come again? Eh? Why? Because we don't know the way. Eh? We we don't know the way on earth only. Eh? If we tell to go to, eh? uh. You say one way, we will go the other way. Eh? That's what we are doing now, people. And people are, God is telling, walk in a godly life. Everybody is walking in worldly life. Huh? Here only they are not obedient means after their death, the huh? soul will be so obedient, it will directly go to heaven. It seems. Stand before the throne of Christ and ask Christ, to please open your book, oh, please judge me. Huh? What fun, dear brethren. Huh? Where does the Bible say? No, where is given in the Bible? See, what does it say? Jesus said, if I go, I will prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you. I will take you. So Jesus has to take us to heaven, dear brethren. Not that we can go like just like that one only. Why Jesus' second coming is given? Therefore, 
we need to study the Bible. Not just read the Bible, just bluntly reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, nothing can be understood. Study. Bible study has to be done. Huh? Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Here a little, there a little. You see, search the scriptures. You see, none shall miss her mate, none shall want her. You see, spirit gathers. Therefore, dear brethren, therefore, this is beautifully demonstrated, you see, in the prayer which Moses did. You see, Moses prayed to the Lord in the bush. What did he pray? The God of Abraham, God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. What did he mean? That, does he mean that he is a God of the dead? No, though they are dead. Though Abraham is dead, though Isaac is dead, though Jacob is dead, everybody are sleeping. They will all come back to life when in his kingdom. Hence it is told that the God is a God of living. People are not of that. Christ has given the ransom. It is a surety that everybody will come back to life. Hmm? See, read Luke 28 chapter verse 37 and 38. Hmm. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses sued at the bush when he called the Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living, for all live unto him. See? You see? Huh? No, no, the dead are all raised. You see, they'll all come back when. When the shout of the archangel, the Lord descends. You see, then everybody shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and come out. Then they will also come, dear brethren. Hence, God is the God of living. You see, say, read Psalms 90, verse 3. Do turn at the man to destruction and say, to Return, you children of men. See, what did God say? He turns man to destruction and says, Return, return from the destruction, you son of man. Everybody return from the dust. You see, this will happen at the second coming of Jesus. You see, therefore Jesus clearly said and very boldly said, How many people are there in heaven? What is Jesus? How many people are there in heaven, brother? Let me see who can answer. Vishnu, brother, or Peter, brother, who will answer? How many people are there in heaven? What did Jesus say? Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Huh? Very good. Read, brother. John 3 13. Correct. Read. Huh? And no man has ascended up to heaven. See? But he no man. Up. No man has ascended to heaven. No man has ascended to heaven means definitely. Do you think Jesus will simply tell like that only? Uh, easy. Uh, simply, can, can he tell lies? No. Our Lord, our Master. You see? <laughs> He is the truth. He is the word of God. You see, he is the wisdom of God. He is the good shepherd. He is the life. He said, I am the way, the truth. And the life, he is the truth. How can he tell simply that way? When somebody was there in heaven, he would have definitely told us. No? He clearly says, no man has ascended to heaven. But we all believe that everybody is there in heaven. Eh? What did Jesus say? Now, here is a matter of question whether we believe the Lord's words or human words. Isn't it? So, whether we are going to believe the word what Jesus said or whether we are going to believe what human beings are telling. That is very important. So, dear brethren, so we will stop here. Again, next week, we will continue and still learn many more things about this, uh, the false theory of the immortal soul. Okay, any questions? Sir? Uh, any doubts, uh, Peter brother and Vishnu brother, you are asking, you can ask me. I'm okay, thank you so much. Okay, Peter brother, any doubts, any questions? No, sir, thank you so much. Okay, so we'll be sending the notes and the YouTube link. Please go through the YouTube link. So please watch it again and again. If you have still any doubts, any questions, you can definitely ask. But Ashish is there to assist you in uh, your Nepali language. So uh, he will help you and he will guide you and so many things you can clarify. Uh, okay.